and welcome to this MindFusion tutorial. Here, we'll use the Java Diagram Library to create the database scheme, which you see. The scheme contains a table for each table in the actual database. Each row in the table gives information about the column name, data type, and size of the data in the real table. An image of a key indicates if this is a primary key field, a foreign key field, or none. We start with a Java Swing project, where we have already defined some classes used by the application. First, we have added the library for the J-diagram and the library with a JDBC driver for MySQL. The sample uses the Sakilla MySQL database. Then, we have defined the following Java classes that will assist us in building the DB diagram. The DB column class defines a database column. It has fields for the name, data type, and data length. A Boolean field indicates if the column is a primary key. The DB Relation class defines a relationship between two tables. The four fields of this class give information about the two tables that participate in the relationship together with their respective fields that are related. The DB Metadata class is the class that reads information from the database metadata and creates instances of the DB relation and DB column table objects. This class exposes a method that reads the names of all tables in the database, another method that reads all relationships in the database, and a method that reads all columns in a given table. All those methods are static. Let's get back to our main class, which extends JFrame. We have already defined the main method that runs the application. We will use four controls, the diagram, a diagram view, a J scroll pane, a zoom control, and a list of strings that will hold the names of the DB tables. We have imported the diagramming library as well as the other Java packages that will be used. Let's start by setting some basic properties on main window. The title, visibility, and exit on close as default close operation. Now let's initialize our controls. The diagram control has auto resize to write and down. The diagram view takes the diagram as an argument in the constructor. We set the view of the zoom control to be the diagram view we've just created. And finally, we initialize the J scroll pane with the diagram view. We use border layout to arrange the components. Note that the layout manager is specified before we add the controls to the main panel. The zoom control will be to the right. The remaining place is for the scroll pane with the diagram, which has border layout center. We continue by setting some general properties for the diagram. The count of the table columns, the height of the table rows, and some styling. We disable shadows for diagram nodes and enable styled text. Styled text means we can use HTML markup to format text in table nodes. Now, we should read the table names. We do this in a try and catch block because our method throws a SQL exception. Otherwise, there is nothing notable in this block of code. When it gets executed, we have the names of all DB tables in the global variable tables. Let's call the method and now get the column metadata for each DB table. Again, in a try and catch block, we call the static DB metadata method that reads all necessary data for each column in the database. Now let's create the table node objects. First, we specify the initial dimension of the table nodes. 
We create the nodes using the factory class of the diagram library. We get a factory instance by calling diagram.getFactory. Factory provides methods for creating all types of diagram objects. In our case, we use createTableNode with parameters the x and y coordinates of the node, width and height, the number of rows and columns. The height is calculated based on the count of rows. The count of columns is 4. Let's use HTML styling when we set the caption of the table node. We call set caption and use the name of the DB table. We also use the name as an ID for this table node. Next, we make some customization for the table node. We align the caption to the center, increase the caption height, and allow resize of the columns. We also change the shape of the table node to rounded rectangle and change the background brush to a light blue one. Next, we cycle through all DB column objects that we've read from the table metadata and fill the information in the respective cells of the table node. Cells in the second column contain the name of the column in bold, then follow the data type and the data size. There's more to do if the column is a primary key. We read an image that we have already added in the res folder of the project and set it as an image in the first column of the respective table row. More table customizations follow. We call underscore resize to fit text on the table node to make the table adjust its size to the size of all text that's in it. This, however, does not consider the size of the image and we must call set width on the first column to set its size explicitly. Calling underscore table.resize to fit image guarantees that the table would resize once again, this time to fit the primary key image. Let's inspect our work so far. The tables look great. They lack relationship connections between them. They are piled one over the other, which is expected since we've created them with the same top and left coordinates. We will arrange them with an automatic layout later. Let's create the relationships. We need another try and catch block. We call the static method of the DB metadata class get relations metadata. To create a diagram link between table nodes, we will need the table nodes and the indexes of the rows in them, which must be connected. We use diagram.getNodeByID method to find the node objects, which we cast to table nodes. Then we must find the index of the row that represents the key in the source table.
we find it by comparing its text. We repeat the process for the destination table. Now we are ready to call Create Diagram Link from the Factory class of the diagram. The newly created link would have a custom base shape and would be of cascading link type. Let's call our new method. Now the tables are connected as they should, but need to be arranged properly. The diagram control offers a variety of automatic layout algorithms. In our case, we use a horizontal layered layout. We apply to it some customization. First, we change the orientation of the links. They should always come from the left size. Then we use a grid router to arrange just the connectors. Some more diagram customizations follow. We resize the diagram to fit all items and scroll to its center. We change the type of the link crossings to arcs and make them rounded. Finally, we repaint the diagram. We finish by calling the method and instructing the main window that we want it to start maximized. With this, our sample is ready. Everything is in place. The zoom control allows us to easily navigate through the numerous DB tables. That's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.